Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, several arrests and injuries reported as Thai police crackdown on protesters. Andres Arauz emphasizes social protection model in Ecuador's presidential debate. Renowned Egyptian feminist Nawal Al-Sadawi passes away at 89. Anti-government protests continue across Paraguay amid worsening socio-economic crisis. In our first story, several people were injured and arrested in a police crackdown on a demonstration in Thailand. Around 1,500 people had gathered in Bangkok on March 20th amid a resurgence of protests against the monarchy and the government. Saturday's protests had been organized by the REDEM or Restart Democracy Group launched by the Free Youth Movement. Protesters gathered outside the Royal Palace. Hundreds of police officers were deployed in the area and barricades made of empty cargo containers were also set up. As protesters attempted to push past the barricades, they were attacked, attacked with tear gas, water cannons and rubber bullets. Police were reported to be firing indiscriminately into the crowd, injuring several people. According to the media organization Prachatai, the Arawan Medical Center reported on March 21st that 33 people had been transferred to the hospital. Among those injured were at least one minor, three journalists and police personnel. The Thai Lawyers for Human Rights group also reported that 32 people were detained at the site of the protest. 16 protesters were then arrested and now face charges. They were released on bail by a criminal court in Bangkok on March 22nd. Amid growing demands for democratization, Thai protesters have been persecuted and faced charges related to sedition and less majesty laws. These laws criminalize actions considered an insult to the monarchy. Saturday's protest was held days after a bill to replace the 2017 constitution with an elected body failed to pass in a joint session of parliament. Protesters have denounced the military-supported government of Prime Minister Prayut chan ocha and the powers given to the monarchy. In our next story, a presidential debate between progressive frontrunner Andres Arauz and right-wing candidate Guillermo Lasso was held on March 21st. The debate had been organized by the National Electoral Council ahead of the runoff elections on April 11th. It focused on a wide range of topics including the economy, employment and health. Andres Arauz, who belongs to the Union for Hope Alliance, has proposed a social protection model to overcome the crisis facing Ecuador. During the debate, Arauz emphasized the need to promote local production, work and liquidity. He also stated that his government would keep the US dollar as a national currency. His government will reportedly also eliminate the 2% tax on annual sales for micro companies. He has opposed a privatized model of healthcare and has promised to provide free and universal COVID vaccinations. With a focus on preventive healthcare, he spoke about implementing a digital clinic plan and guaranteeing the supply of medicines. He is also committed to consolidating intercultural and bilingual education. And there's Arouse has also promised to increase seats in public universities and scholarships to ensure access to higher education. His government, if he forms one, will also recognize the collective rights and ancestral practices of indigenous communities. He won the first round of elections with 32.7% of the votes and is considered to be in a favorable position to win the presidency. In our next story, acclaimed Egyptian feminist writer Nawal El Sadawi has passed away at the age of 89. Local media reported that she had been suffering from age-related illnesses. She died in a hospital in Cairo on March 21st. She was a member of the Egyptian left and championed women's rights and working class politics. Sadawi was a, Sadawi was a doctor by training and served as the director of public health for the Egyptian government. However, she was removed from the post in 1972 following the publishing of her book, Women and Sex. She had opposed the practice of female genital mutilation, which is prevalent in the region. She also advocated for women's equality, including equal inheritance rights, and spoke out against compulsory veiling. Compulsory veiling. She was also imprisoned during Anwar Sadat's rule in 1981-82. In jail, she founded the Arab Organization of Human Rights in 1983. She also opposed the imperialist invasion of Afghanistan and Israel's occupation of Palestine. Following the hostility towards advocacy for women's liberation and against religious conservatism, she was forced to go into exile in 1988. She later returned and took an active part in the 2011 mass uprising which overthrew Husni Mubarak. For our final story, we go to Paraguay which has been witnessing large-scale protests against the government over the past few weeks. Thousands have gathered to demand the resignation of right-wing President Mario Abdo Benitez, the Vice President and the Cabinet. The government has been denounced for its mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic and the broader social and economic crisis facing the country. Here is a video feature on the ongoing protests. Protests demanding resignation of the president and his cabinet continue in Paraguay. Thousands of Paraguayans have been mobilizing since March 5th in different cities of the country in rejection of the national government's mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic and the deepening of economic crisis and social inequality. On March 18th, several protests took place in various parts of the country against Congress's decision to reject the impeachment of the far-right president, Mario Abdes Benitez, Vice President Hugo Velasquez, and the rest of the cabinet in Paraguay. The police violently attacked the protests that took place in front of Congress headquarters with tear gas, pressurized water, and rubber bullets. At least 24 protesters were arrested on Thursday. 
During the confrontation, commercial establishments and vehicles were set on fire and destroyed. Social anger was unleashed after Congress voted on impeachment requested by the opposition Liberal Party due to the President's incompetence in handling the COVID-19 crisis. Protesters have been demonstrating for more than a week with violent clashes with the police. During the protests on March 5th, one Paraguayan citizen was killed and 20 people were injured. One of the injured protesters remains in an intensive care unit due to a serious injury to his left eye caused by a rubber bullet impact. The members of the Agrarian and Popular Movement, a grassroots organization bringing together peasants from seven departments of the country, also arrived in the capital to support the mobilizations of young Paraguayans and their demands. Under the banner of, quote, Paraguay is not for sale, it is to be defended, end quote, the MAP, the Paraguayan Peasant Movement, the National Coordination of Homeless People, the National Federation of Secondary Students, the Coordinator of University Students of the National University of Asuncion, among others, have organized roadblocks of major highways over the past couple of days. According to Teleso reports, the protests were called for by civil society organizations after a series of complaints were raised by the family members of COVID-19 patients that the country did not have essential medicine to treat them. These family members reported that they have had to spend large sums of money in order to ensure the survival of their loved ones. Several reports indicate that the public health system is on the verge of collapse and many are not able to receive the treatment that they need. This past week's denouncements over the mismanagement of the public health crisis by this government is not new. Since the start of the pandemic, organized sectors in Paraguay have been mobilizing against the ineffective measures taken to combat COVID-19 and against the deepening economic crisis in the country worsened by the pandemic. In the last 24 hours, Paraguay reported 2,605 new infections, the highest number reported in a single day since March 2020. The total report case in Paraguay reached up to 190,000. Due to the pressure and political opposition on the streets on March 6th, Health Minister Julio Mazzolini announced his resignation. On March 10th, the president of the Social Welfare Institute, Andres Guetich, resigned amid a corruption scandal linked to the diversion of essential medicines. However, the protesters considered it insufficient and reiterated that their primary demand is the president and vice president's resignations. That's all we have time for today. Be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Thank you.